Hi, and welcome to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History's Specimen Spotlight. I'm your host, Lee Hall, and today we are very excited to be in the collections for the Department of Ornithology. Welcome to Specimen Spotlight. Today we're here with Dr. Andy Jones, the Curator of Ornithology and Director of Science. Hi, Andy. Hey, Lee. Thanks for having us today. Absolutely. So, uh, what did you pick for Specimen Spotlight? Uh, I picked a viri. Uh, so, the specimen in front of us is a viri, which is a type of thrush. They nest around North America and winter in South America. Okay. And so, uh, particularly, why did you pick a viri? So this one I think is a great example of how we do modern collecting. Um, this is a specimen that typically we would have something like this, which is a round skin. And that is the standard for research, but nowadays we're trying to save as much material as possible. So okay. we do have a spread wing. Uh, the spread wing looks, lets us look at things like molt patterns and also aerodynamics on the birds. We can look at the wing really? shape and understand how, how well they uh, function as migrants. So did you take, this is a wing from this bird here. That's right. I see there's one wing still on. Yeah, so is we're there, missing a wing on the other side. Why don't you take both wings off? Uh, so you might have a researcher studying the attachment points on the wing or they might be looking at other aspects of how it would sit naturally on the body. Okay. But for aerodynamics, we just need the one. So we. We just take a single wing off. So there's there's a, a good deal of vials here on the table. What what exactly is going on with these? Yes, yeah, so we've saved a lot of material from this bird, including uh, a tissue sample. So this is pretty standard now. We take part of the heart and part of the breast muscle, and this would stay frozen at negative 60 Celsius. Really? We can take a little piece of that material, take it into the lab, and get DNA sequence from this bird. Or if a researcher from another institution wants to borrow that, we can send excuse me, send them a little piece of tissue and they can work with it there at their lab. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we have the stomach from the bird. Um, there are researchers studying diet and so we've taken the whole stomach out and preserved it in alcohol. Oh, wow. And then we've saved the liver from this bird and there are researchers that study what tick-borne diseases birds have encountered and they can actually study that by looking at parts of the liver. So how do you determine or choose what organs to preserve from these birds? So the, the basic level that just about everybody does is heart and breast muscle because that's the best for DNA. Uh, a lot of people work with mitochondrial DNA. There's a lot of mitochondria in the heart, so that's why we save the heart. Yeah. What is in this large jar uh, so, here? So this one's pretty unusual. This is actually the full um, trachea, the windpipe from the bird, including the tongue and the beginning of the lungs. So this bird has a really beautiful song and not much has been done on how they produce that song or how that song varies from place to place. And so we have recordings of viris from all over the U.S. and we've published papers on, on how these birds actually communicate with each other. And now we're trying to do some of the anatomical work to understand how they produce this really cool song. So would you blow air through? The specimen? No. <laughs> so once they're pickled, uh, they've shrunk down and don't function anymore. But mm. this would be more for doing microscopic dissections and looking at the actual singing apparatus. Okay. So instead of a, uh, a larynx like we have, they have a syrinx down in the chest that produces sound. And so we'll take a close look at that later. Fascinating. Is this fairly standard for the um, the data that you will retain from the birds here? Uh, this, this one's pretty exceptional because we have outside researchers wanting to work on some of these um, samples, but we typically save at least the skin, the wing, the tissue, often the stomach, and then it's only in special cases we might go beyond that. Although increasingly we're doing what's in this last vial, which is ectoparasites. Ooh. So we actually have uh, mites and lice that came off of this bird. So they're, they're feeding on the feathers of themselves, or they might actually be biting the bird on the skin and trying to get blood. And we preserve those because there's also people doing a lot of research on, on uh, parasites on birds. Some of those are specific to the species of bird they live on. So these could actually be lice that only live on viris. So when you collect a viri, you're also collecting a microscopic ecosystem. That's right. That's wow, right. that's really cool. Yeah. Well, Andy, that was really interesting. And thank you so much for your time and for having us today for Specimen Spotlight. Absolutely.